Hello, my name is Andy Hawker and I'm with E&M Sales and today I'm going to go over the basics of pneumatic valves and how they operate and how to correctly plumb them into a pneumatic circuit. So today I want to talk about really two, the two basic types of valves that we have which are sub-base valves and inline valves. This is an example of an inline valve and an inline valve is uh, just as exactly as it sounds. It plumbs in line with the air line. Uh, this valve has the ports that are right in the body of the valve and so the air comes from your air supply and then goes right to the uh, the work that you're having done whether it's an air cylinder, a rotary actuator, perhaps an air motor, that type of thing. And again the other type of valve is the sub-base valve where you have the valve body with the valve spool and the electrical actuator mounted to a sub-base and the sub-base has the ports in it. And the advantage of one over the other is, is that, for instance, a sub-base valve can have the base mounted to a fixture and have the plumbing coming into it. And if for any reason you ever want to change the valve, you never have to undo the plumbing. It stays in one place, you take two screws off, and the body comes off, and you can change that out if you need to for any reason. But one of the advantages of an inline valve is that it's a simpler product. Uh, you have less parts to have to deal with and, and sometimes uh, they take up less space and can be a little less expensive. So there's advantages and disadvantages of, of both types of valves. There are also valves that are five-ported. We call these four-way valves. And the reason we call them four-way valves, even though there's five ports, is because we're allowing the air to travel in four different paths through the valve body. Air comes into the number one port, and the number one port on a five-ported valve is the middle port on the side that has the three ports. That's where air comes into, the number one port. On the other side of the valve are the two working ports, or cylinder ports. These would go out to the cylinder. So when the valve operates, for instance on this valve, when the solenoid operates, it shifts the spool in this direction, causing the air to flow from port 1 in this case to port 4. So we call this valve a, or this end of the valve, the 1 4 end. When the solenoid de energizes, the spring pushes the spool back in this direction, and the air flows then from port 4 now out port 5, which is the exhaust, and the incoming air from port 1 goes to port 2, and then that is why we call this end of the valve the one two end. As we were just discussing on the five port valve, this is a representation of the five port valve and again here's number one port. The air comes into number one from our air supply and in this case when the one two end is actuated air is able to flow from port one to port two. Port two would then go out to the cylinder. Air is exhausting from port four to port five right now and then when the 1-4 end actuates, we shift the spool, and now air is flowing from port 1 to port 4. And we're exhausting air from port 2 to port 3. And that allows our air cylinder to shift in the other direction. So that's the basics of a spool valve and how that operates. And this is a spool valve with five ports. It's four-way because we have air that can travel in four directions and in this case um, we don't show operators on either end of this but we could have a solenoid operator on one end with a spring return on the other or we could have an air operator on one end with a spring return on the other we could have two solenoid operators or we could have two air operators coming back to this valve this is again an inline valve but this is a three port valve so we would call this a two-way valve so because the air only flows really in two directions, either through the valve or exhausting from the valve. But it's the same principles as the other valve that we looked at. When you have a valve, you always plumb your air coming from your air supply into the number one port. Now three-way valves can be either normally open or normally closed. Another way of saying that is normally open is normally passing. It normally passes the air. 
normally closed is normally non-passing. Now the reason I make that distinction is because in electrical, uh, in electrical circuitry, a normally open circuit is the one that is non-passing. So it's just the opposite in a pneumatic circuit. Normally open is passing. So with this valve, air comes into port number one here, and you can see again that we have two ports. Air comes into number one, and this is a normally non-passing valve or a normally closed valve. So air is not going anywhere currently, except it can exhaust from the number two port out the number three port. So in this state, the valve is not, the coil is not energized, the spring is in control, and the spool is pushed this way. So we call this the one zero in because air is not passing anywhere when the spring is in control. However, when we energize the coil and we shift the spool, now we have air passing from one to two, from port one to port two. So we call this the one two end, much like the one two and the one four end of a five port valve. I am Layla Hawker, daughter of um, Mr. Andy Hawker of e and Sales, and I'm going to show you a few valves that you probably saw that my dad showed a few seconds ago, except these are different ones. Besides the electrically or air operated valves, EM sells manually oper operated valves. This first valve is the lever valve. It shifts the air by moving the lever back and forth like this. Wait, oh. Wait. This lever valve is also a five port, two position, va two position valve. The second valve is also a, a lever valve but it is a two-port, one-way valve that was simply on or off, like this, kind of. Okay. The last valve is a push button, a three-port, two-way valve. It operates by pushing this button. This valve is normally closed and opens when you push the button. Wah! <laughs>